What is going on my lions? Welcome, it's Monday. Um, today we're going to talk about shipping because I get a lot of questions about how shipping works at Amazon FBA and what are the terms and honestly guys it's one of the most daunting things. Like now I've had the privilege to work at a freight forwarder and customs broker um, who I currently use for my shipments and I'm wearing their t-shirt or golf shirt that is so it is Omnitrans and check it out if you guys want to uh, really good forwarder so but they do huge business so it's not really for new starters or anything like that for Amazon but once you get there once you're selling six figures and all they're perfect for you because they take care of it from A to Z and they have offices in China so uh, yeah so that's it but today let's talk about shipping let's simplify shipping because I know it's one of the most daunting processes you'll ever go through and of course the terms what do the inco terms mean um, and I'll explain that to you guys as well so um, it is one of the most confusing uh, one that you can lose a lot of money if you don't do it right one that actually benefits you in different ways when you use different um, shipping terms or you use different types of shipping uh, uh, shipping uh, types basically so let's simplify to today let's break it down now bear with me I'm gonna try to make it as simple as possible for you guys but I still have to give you guys the main details let's talk about shipping now shipping in with Amazon FBA you guys need to know what happens with your product first of all you gotta know the whole process first of all so keep this in mind and I'm gonna break it down into five six steps for you guys to actually um, so you can visually see what's happening the first thing that happens is you find a product you manufacture it at a, at a warehouse or at your supplier in China where most suppliers are right from there they have to pack it for you guys wrap it shrink wrap it whatever it is and then they have to get it ready on a skit or however the shipping works uh, for that specific product and they have to send it uh, via truck freight to the port now this can be an airport or an ocean port uh, depending on if you guys are doing air freight or ocean freight the shipment gets trucked from the warehouse suppliers warehouse to the port right now main ports in China are Shenzhen Qingdao and um, uh, Shanghai right so from there the uh, the container or your shipment has to get on a vessel right so there are some charges at F there are charges actually at every step of the way and like I did that uh, intro for you guys over the weekend I did a live stream about inco terms so you guys can understand what kind of costs are involved with your shipping so what happens then is that the product or the your shipment gets loaded on a vessel now this is gonna be either an airplane or a boat uh, or a ship I should say right uh, freighter uh, they call them steamships steamships sorry so from there the journey of your shipment begins from the port to a port in United States Canada where have you right the shipment gets here it needs to be unloaded it needs to be unloaded to the port so um, they have like these holding their warehouses they call them bonded warehouse or whatever um, they are different kinds of warehouses it's awaiting customs clearance now with ocean shipments um, they have to be customs cleared especially in the United States before it arrives at the port just because they don't want to have any delays and that's called ISF we'll get to that in a future video but today you don't need that so from there it gets unloaded now if it's on a plane it'll get unloaded they'll go to a customs warehouse from there once it's released um, it can be trucked down to the warehouse of uh, where the fulfillment center is for Amazon right so there are quite a number of steps that is involved in each process now the confusing part becomes is when you involve now you already got a complicated process as it is you involve shipping terms what are inco terms inco terms means international commercial terms so these are internationally known and the point of inco terms is is to figure out who's gonna pay for what portion of the journey of your freight okay so the three of them now there are a lot of them honestly like there's I think about more than 10 that they're basically each one um, allocates the responsibility of the buyer and seller differently like I've shown you guys so basically the charges that you have along the way the inco terms decides 
what part is your responsibility as the buyer and what part is the seller's responsibility which is your manufacturer if you are a beginner right and you don't know anything about shipping uh, nothing at all I suggest you use DDP terms which basically means delivery duty paid that in that condition right the seller which is your manufacturer takes care of everything they hire their own freight forwarder right um, they hire their own customs broker so their freight forwarder will have an agent overseas here and they will clear your goods so you don't have to worry about anything so I suggest that if you guys are newbie use your uh, suppliers freight forwarder because you don't want to get into the you don't want to involve yourselves with the shipping trying to get codes and everything because honestly like a lot of these guys will rip you guys off if you if they know you're a newbie like I mean uh, there are customs brokers that for one shipment they'll charge you if you have like five hundred dollars for just customs clearance while if you have like let's say hundred they'll charge you like fifty bucks right so you'll see how the prices uh, differentiate between uh, depending on how much volume you have so you're let's say you're bringing hundred two hundred units right that's really one shipment for them right a full container is one shipment so keep that in mind DDP takes care of everything it's zero obligation on your end but hundred percent obligation on your freight or on your suppliers end right so this is perfect but where does the cost go right who pays for the shipping who pays uh, for all the processes you at the end still pay for it it's just you don't handle it right because what your supplier is gonna do is gonna roll it in into the cost of your shipping that will come with your product the cost of your product right so it's still the cost is there it'll be higher it's more expensive of course uh, but you don't have to worry about um, taking care of it so I suggest if you're a newbie do that the second one which is the most common one is FOB FOB stands for freight on board or uh, sorry free on board what does that mean so the obligation is split between the seller and the buyer now that you've gained a little bit more experience on Amazon and you started selling and you're making money and you're more comfortable about shipping and you've contacted some forwarders I suggest you use FOB why because it's going to be more cost effective for you guys now you have a little bit more leverage and knowledge and you can find your own forwarder what does FOB do so the supplier or seller is responsible to bring your shipment from their warehouse up until the port and load it onto the vessel the supplier covers that cost now again that cost still rolled into your product because essentially you're buying it but once the sh shipping gets onto the vessel and from there the journey up until it gets to your door it's your responsibility to pay for the cost so you're paying for the freight right um, of the ship to bring it over here you're paying for customs clearance uh, into United States or Canada and you're paying for it to be trucked from the port once it gets here to you to an Amazon FBA warehouse so all that cost is assumed by you over here so you have to pay it and the rest is assumed by your supplier all right so that's FOB in its simplest form now there are um, handling fees and stuff like that which we will talk about in a different video but like I just want to simplify it for you guys for this one and the third one that not a lot of people uh, or I don't recommend using um, is XWorks right EXW you've probably seen it that actually stands for XWorks XWorks means that um, you as a buyer are responsible for the entire process all right so it's it's one of those things that if you're a newbie I do not suggest it because you don't have any experience with shipping right so the the shipper is also the seller is only responsible to pack your goods right and then the rest is you you go uh, you send a forwarder or a freight forwarder or a trucking company in China to go pick up the shipment from the seller's warehouse bring it to the port load it on the vessel journey continues to North America unload it customs clear it and send it to an Amazon FBA warehouse all that cost is assumed by you now there are forwarders who specialize in this so they'll take care of the process for you right but there's still cost so you basically pay for everything up front for shipping and your supplier is not going to charge you for shipping you just take care of it here so that's these are the three most common types that are used with Amazon FBA products and again I suggest DDP uh, mostly it's a little bit cost, uh, costly but um, it's the best one for newbies I use personally FOB just because I have experience with it I still don't touch XWorks 
The reason is that I don't want to deal with Chinese trucking companies. I don't want them to, you know, like the response times and waste my time and trying to find. There's so many of them, right? So I don't deal with that. I just want to take care of what I can and what I'm comfortable with. And the company that I use does it really well. So I use it for B and uh, I have no problems at all. So these are, I hope I simplified the shipping process and terms for you guys. So basically think of shipping as coming from point A to point B, I'm not gonna, uh, sorry, point Z, I'm not gonna say B because you have B, C, D, E, F, G, like there are that many process, uh, steps in there. So the, basically the terms determine whether you're gonna pay or your seller are gonna pay for what part of the freight or of uh, your freight's journey. That's really it. That's basically in quote terms and I hope this really simplifies it for you guys. So again, um, you got DDP with zero obligation on you and 100% obligation on your seller or your supplier. You got FOB which is somewhat 50-50 and you've got XWorks which is 100% on you it's your obligation to bring your goods here and 0% shipping obligation on your uh, supplier. Now the other thing I get asked a lot is how long does it actually take whether I should choose uh, ocean versus air, how do I determine that and uh, what are some of the factors that decide that. So air is really good for lightweight shipments, okay? So if you got a shipment that is uh, not a big piece count, uh, the shipment, the product is lighter and uh, you have a smaller shipment and it's not, it's not like a container or anything like that that you can fill, air is perfect for that. Ocean, on the other hand, ocean is for heavier shipments, uh, for bulk shipment, so you got let's say 500 to 1000 pieces depending on what your product is. If you're selling bike, it's way different. You probably have a few containers um, and all that. So that's why people do ocean versus air. But the other thing about air is that it's very fast. Within four to five business days, um, sometimes a bit more, let's say, give it a delay. So I would say four to seven business or days, uh, your shipment is here, is here by air from China. But if you're bringing in a shipment that is, uh, let's say, um, on ocean, uh, on a steamship line, and let's say you have a few containers, it's going to take you from 30 to 40 days, depending on if there are delays at the port, um, depending on how fast your trucker can bring it and all that. So there's a lot of variables with that. So because of that, uh, a lot of people choose air for lighter shipments. Now, if you, if you now, now it is a little bit cost sensitive uh, to cost. So now it is a bit cost effective to do ocean, uh, just because it takes it's more delayed. It's not as fast or expedited. Um, the cost of steamship lines cost a lot less to bring your products over here. So, but if you're selling a product that is time sensitive and you're running out of inventory, or you're selling a product that's seasonal, I highly suggest you do air, and given that your shipment is not that heavy, hopefully, and you'll be fine. One of the tricks to save money at the same time to make sure you have inventory, uh, at the same time you make sure that you take advantage of both shipping types, air or ocean, is to actually do both. What do I mean by that? Now, imagine that you ordered 500 units of a product, right? You bring 100 of it by air, and this is based on your sales projection that you know over the next month or so, you're gonna sell about 100 units. You bring the first 100 in a, uh, on, a, on an airplane, bring it over here, start selling right away, you don't have to wait, because a lot of people hate waiting. They're like, okay, my shipment is coming, I'm gonna start selling, but at the same time, they feel like they're losing sales, they're losing market share, and stuff like that. So because of that, bring those 100 units that you know you're going to sell within a month or uh, you know you have enough for a month, right? The rest of the 400, put it on a ship. Bring it in a container, uh, L uh, sorry, LCL less than container or if you have a full container that your items fit in, by all means, bring it by ocean and by the time you run off inventory of your first shipment, which you did by air, your ocean shipment will be right here at your door uh, or at an Amazon FBA warehouse uh, to basically continue your business. So 
That is a standard common practice that not a lot of people talk about, but it is a perfect way to make sure you don't run out of inventory and at the same time save some shipping money. So I hope I really simplified the shipping terms and uh, the shipping process for you guys. Again, my, I highly suggest that you do DDP if you're a newbie. Uh, once you get a little bit of experience, do FOB. Xworks, I don't really suggest much. And like I've gone through um, in the, um, what do you call, in the live stream over the weekend, uh, watch for the charges that I've mentioned because those things really play a role in your shipping cost. Thanks again guys, I really appreciate your viewership. I hope you got, this video helped you guys out. If it did, leave a comment, let me know how. If it didn't or you have a question about something, again, leave a comment and I'll be happy to answer it. Any questions you guys have. If you haven't subscribed to this channel and you're new, please subscribe. I'm gonna be throwing a lot of information at you guys. So this is just to help you guys for free to help you build your Amazon FBA business so you don't have to go buy course or anything like that. And that's basically the purpose of this channel. Thanks again, guys. I'm gonna see you guys on Wednesday at one and we're gonna talk about how much money you will need in order to start an Amazon FBA business. Very important topic, guys. Thanks again and I'll see you guys there.